If you keep hearing about open art but have no idea what it actually does or whether it's worth paying for, this video is for you. Open art promises to replace your entire stack of AI subscriptions with one platform that handles images, videos, characters, and audio all in the same place. But here's the thing, most all-in-one platforms sound incredible until you actually try using them and then you realize they're limited, lack the latest models, or just push you right back to the individual tools anyway. So I spent the last few months putting open art through real projects to see if it actually delivers on that promise or if it's just another another overhyped tool that wastes your time and money, and what I discovered might surprise you. In this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly what open art is, show you the core features that actually matter, break down what it does well, call out where it falls short, and help you decide whether it's actually worth your money. By the way, if you want to follow along, I'll leave a link for open art in the description below. So let's get into it. When you first sign into open art, you land on this homepage with a lot happening on screen. Trust me though, for a platform that features image, video, and audio generation, along with multiple other tools, it's really not common complicated. I'll go ahead and show you all the core features. The feature I use most often inside OpenArt is video creation, so let's start there. On the left-hand side, click on the video icon. This opens up a workflow dedicated entirely to working with videos. You've got text to video, image to video, element to video, plus audio features, video upscaling, and lip sync. Let's start with text to video, so I click on text right here. Now click this button to access the model selection. As you can see, you get access to a massive range of video models. You've got professional grade models like VEO3, faster and cheaper options like Kling, top performers like Seadance or Sora 2, and many more. This is one of the biggest advantages of open art. You're not locked into one model. You can switch between them depending on what your project needs. And the moment a new model drops, open art will feature it so you don't have to pay for a different subscription. For this test, I'm going with Google VO3, which is probably the most in-demand video model right now. Once you select a model, you'll notice each one has its own unique settings. With VO3, you can switch the version from 3.1 or 3, toggle audio on or off, set your resolution, change aspect ratio, and adjust other parameters. Now I'm going to paste in my prompt. For this one, I'll go with a cinematic shot of a lone astronaut walking across a red desert landscape at sunset, dust kicking up with each step, dramatic lighting casting, long shadows across the terrain. And there's this really cool feature inside open art called the auto enhance button. What this does is automatically refine your prompt for you. Instead of spending forever tweaking wording and adding details, the AI handles the optimization behind the scenes, which means you consistently get stronger results even if your prompt writing isn't perfect. I really like this because I used to waste so much time adjusting prompts just to get decent outputs. With Auto Enhance, I just drop in my idea and let it do the heavy lifting. Now let's click Create and see what we get. And honestly, the results came out way better than I expected. The astronaut's movement feels realistic, the dust particles catch the light perfectly, and you can actually see the fabric of the suit moving naturally. What's important here is that open art isn't compressing or limiting the model. You're getting the full power of VEO 3.1 right inside this interface. Now let's test image to video with a different model to see if open art holds up across the board. From the left side, click on image to video. This time, let's select Kling 2.6 from the model dropdown. I'll upload this photograph of a city street at night. For the prompt, I'll use this one I prepared. Camera slowly pushes forward down the street. Car headlights pass by. Neon signs flicker. Rain reflects on the pavement. Now with Kling, you have some settings to play with. For example, you can set the duration anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds. I'll set this to 5 seconds and click create. And this came out looking incredible. The motion is smooth, the environmental details like rain and reflections are convincing, and the overall aesthetic is exactly what you'd expect. Personally, I like using VEO3 when I want ultra-realistic videos with natural motion and cinematic lighting. Kling is my go-to for more stylized, artistic, or vibrant content. Both are powerful, and which one I pick really depends on the style I'm aiming for, and that's generally one of open art's biggest strengths. There is no superior model. Each one excels at something different, so no matter what you're trying to do, there is a model here just for that. Once your video is generated, you can upscale it directly on the platform. Let me show you how. Click on the video you just generated. On the bottom right, you'll see an option called Video Upscale. Click that. This opens up a new workflow where you can select the resolution you want to upscale to, all the way up to 4K. You can also increase the frame rate in the Frame Interpolation tab, adding extra frames to make motion smoother, up to 120 frames per second. This is incredibly useful for social media and YouTube content. Even if the original video is lower resolution, I can bump it up to full HD or 4K, and it looks sharp and professional on any platform. One feature I use just as much as video generation is image creation. To access it, click on image on the left-hand side. This opens up a whole new workflow. Click the switch button right here. You're instantly introduced to tons of different models, probably some you already recognize. One of the coolest ones right now is Nano Banana Pro, which produces insane results, so I'll select that. For the prompt, I'll use this one right here. A young woman sitting at a modern coffee shop. Natural afternoon light streaming through large windows, holding a ceramic cup, warm and inviting atmosphere, photorealistic, and don't 
don't forget to turn on auto enhance because it will automatically refine your prompt before generating the image. Now, when it comes to settings, just like with video, they're separate for each model. You can also select the aspect ratio along with various other settings. For aspect ratio, let's go with landscape, resolution up to 4K. And before clicking create, there's something important to point out. When generating images, you can decide how many to create at once. Of course, this costs more credits if you're generating multiple images, but it also gives you more reference options to pick from, which can make a big difference. So I hit create and let's take a look. And wow, the results came out scarily realistic. The lighting on her face looks completely natural. The reflections in the window behind her are accurate, and even small details like the steam rising from the cup and the texture of her sweater look incredibly lifelike. Everything has this photographic quality with colors that really pop off the screen. Now if you're not happy with a certain image, open art actually allows you to edit them. You can do this by clicking this section right here, which opens up another workflow seamlessly integrated into open art. When it comes to editing, there are a couple of features I personally use most often. Besides normal editing options like cropping or adding text, you can also use a tool called InPaint. This allows you to add or change specific things inside your image. For example, let's say I want to add a flower. All I need to do is select the area where I want the flower to appear, and then in the prompt, I simply type a flower. Then I select my model. Usually I'll go with the premium options. You can adjust prompt adherence, but in most cases that's not crucial. So I just click create and the AI starts working. And as you can see, the result came out looking very good. Another feature I use often is the remove tool. This allows you to remove unwanted objects from your image. For example, suppose I decide to remove the exit sign. All I have to do is highlight the object I want to remove and select magic erase. The AI takes a few extra seconds compared to quick erase, but during that time it's analyzing the frame and filling everything in more precisely. Once it's done, you can see how good it looks. Almost no trace of the object at all. Now I need to be honest. While these editing tools work well, they're not perfect. Sometimes the in-paint feature doesn't quite match the lighting or style of the original image, and you might need to regenerate a few times to get it right. It's good, but it's not flawless. Let's talk about one of OpenArt's standout features, character consistency. Something a lot of people struggle with when they get into AI generations is creating an avatar that actually looks the same across different images and videos while looking realistic. And OpenArt has a feature just for that, and they just updated it to make it significantly better with a way easier to use interface, much better training for your characters, and resolution that goes as high as 4K. Click on character from the left panel. This opens up your main character dashboard. You can create one in two different ways. The first option is to start with an image where you upload between one and four images. The second option is to start with a description where you just write the exact prompt of your character and select the model. I'm going to use this option. Let's test out Nano Banana Pro. This is the model that I think works the best. I'm going to write this prompt. A natural portrait shot of an Asian woman in her 20s. She looks like a 20-year-old Gen Z influencer. Beautiful, natural looking, with professional studio lighting. Now let's generate. You can also select the style right here. There are a bunch of options, but I'll choose photorealistic for this one. Open art gives us four different versions of our character. I'm pretty happy with the one in the top left, so I'll click that one and click on build my character. Once that's done, it gives us four different images the model will be trained on. The front view, the close-up view, the full body view, and the back view. This ensures your character stays consistent from every angle. Once everything looks good, click looks good. Then add a name and a backstory to your character. The backstory isn't necessary, but I recommend adding it if you have the time. I'm going to call mine Alex, then click here, and this saves your character ready for you to use. Now let's jump into the interface. Click on this button that says create. At the top, this is where you can select or switch between your characters. Next up, you have the prompt section, where you describe what you want your character to be doing, where they are, and what they're wearing. Then you have the output size selection, where you can go as high as 4K resolution. And finally, you can select whatever model you prefer to use. But I usually just leave it on auto, so the AI can decide for itself what model works best. Let me test this out. In the prompt field, I'll type Alex standing on a rooftop overlooking a city at sunset. You can also adjust character weight and prompt adherence. I'll keep both around the middle for a balanced result click create. And as you can see, Alex's facial features, hair, and overall appearance are identical to the reference images, but the environment has completely changed. This is incredibly valuable for storytelling, comic creation, or any project where you need the same character across multiple scenes. Finally, one of the newest features added to open art is the audio section. This is different from the audio option inside the video workflow. This is an entirely distinct section where you can create voiceovers for whatever you like. It runs the 11 Labs model in the background, so the quality is really good. You type in what 
whatever line of text you want. For example, I'll type in this sentence right here. Open art makes it easy to create professional content without having multiple subscriptions. Underneath that, you can choose the voice that will speak your line. There are plenty of voices to choose from, and if you want to narrow them down, you can filter by accent, gender, age, or even by use case. For now, I'll select this particular voice. Besides picking a voice, you can adjust a few key settings. The first one is stability, which controls how consistent the voice sounds each time. Lower values mean more variation, while higher values sound more consistent. I usually set it around 0.6 for a good balance. Then there's speed, which just controls how fast the line is spoken. I keep it around 1 because that sounds the most natural. Once you've adjusted those settings, just click create. And now let's take a listen. Open art makes it easy to create professional content without having multiple subscriptions. The results came out sounding really nice, very realistic. I use this audio feature almost daily in my workflow, whether for quick drafts or polishing up videos. It eliminates the need to record my own voiceovers and helps me edit much faster. So with all of that being said, let's circle back to the beginning and answer the question once and for all. Is open art actually worth it? After everything I've shown you today and everything I've tested personally, here's my honest take. Open art is absolutely worth it for anyone working with AI content. It's not just another app you play with once and forget about. It actually becomes part of your daily workflow because it saves you time, gives you faster results, and makes your work look better. And look, normally, if you try to do all of this separately, it's a nightmare. You have to generate an image on one site, download it, then upload it to another site to make a video out of it. Then you carry it over to a completely different platform to add audio, then move it again to another tool to upscale, then jump into yet another subscription just to get lip sync or video editing. Multiple apps, multiple logins, and constantly dragging files back and forth. It's complicated, it's messy, and it costs you a fortune, but open art fixes that, because with open art, everything you've just seen comes together under one subscription that doesn't rob you every month. The essential plan starts at just $14 a month. The advanced plan is $29 a month, and the infinite plan is $56 a month. The crazy part about this is that Google's AI Pro plan alone costs $21 a month, and that's just for access to a couple of models. With open art, for roughly the same price, you get access to the same models and more, plus 12,000 credits monthly on the advanced plan and much more flexibility than you could ever have with just Google. And that's only if you're using Google. What if you also want Kling? Or if you're paying for 11 labs? Suddenly you're already paying enough every month to cover OpenArt's infinite plan, which gives you all the generation you'll ever need. So for me, using OpenArt is a no-brainer. Now, is it perfect? No, but let's be honest. None of the AI tools are perfect. Some of the editing tools could be more refined, and occasionally you'll need to regenerate a few times to get exactly what you want. But those are minor inconveniences compared to the massive time and money savings you get from having everything in one place. So if you're ready to finally upgrade your AI workflow and get a subscription that doesn't just save you money but actually makes you work faster, smarter, and better, then click the link down in the description and sign up for OpenArt today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.